former CIA director under President Obama, retired U.S. Army General David Petraeus joins us now. His book, Conflict, the Evolution of Warfare from 1945 to Gaza, just came out in paperback. Uh, General, thanks so much uh, for joining us. How do you predict Sinwar's death could alter the course of this war? Do you agree with Clarissa? There's an off-ramp for Netanyahu here, uh, but he just needs to articulate what post-war Gaza looks like. I think there is an opportunity here. I'm not sure they're going to seize it. But first, we should recognize how hugely significant this blow is to Hamas. Uh, He was not just symbolic. He was the leader overall, of course, after uh, the political leader was killed in Tehran. So he was the political and military leader, and he was the operational leader as well. So unlike, say, Osama bin Laden killed during my final time in Afghanistan, who was symbolically hugely important, but operationally not that significant. Uh, in this case, he checks every single block. Now, the question is, who will succeed him? Will it be his brother? Will it be someone else? I suspect that the command control communications at this point is very decentralized. But this does give an opportunity for Prime Minister Netanyahu to say, we are now going to enter a new phase of the operations. And in this phase, our objective is to achieve security in Gaza, which is not there now, and to provide a better life for the Palestinians who live there. Uh, Sequentially clearing, holding, uh, restoring basic services, humanitarian assistance, uh, ending this really humanitarian disaster that is the lives, as Clarissa, Clarissa pointed out, for the average Palestinians, and creating a situation Uh, in which they don't want Hamas coming back. They don't want Palestinian Islamic Jihad stepping in because they do want better lives. And I think there is an opportunity for that. And by the way, also to truly destroy Hamas. They're not destroyed yet. They've been decapitated. They've been degraded very, very heavily. But destruction means that they cannot reconstitute. And as long as there is no security Mm -hmm. uh, in Gaza, the, the only security is that provided by criminal elements and remnants of Hamas, they are going to continue to reconstitute, at least in terms of their personnel, even as, frankly, uh, they cannot materially reconstitute because Israel rightly has taken control of the southern border between Gaza and the Sinai, through which and under which, of course, the material used to flow. So I wonder, thinking about the Palestinian people and thinking about how they deserve so much better Uh, than what they're experiencing right now, and thinking about how disastrous the leadership of of Hamas has been for them, is this not an opportunity also for Arab states, for the King of Jordan, uh, for President Sisi? Not until their security. Not until their security. But but only the Israelis could provide the security, or is there a way that there's no No, way that the Arab Arab League would not be able to go in? Arabs are not going to fight. Arabs are not going to fight fellow Arabs, however reprehensible and extreme they are. They're not going to fight fellow Arabs for Israel, nor will the Palestinian. No, not for uh, Israel, but for... Could be introduced. Well, I'm just saying, like, if we're going to try as a, as a world to get to a post-war Gaza, um, it's not going to... Obviously, it won't work with the Israelis occupying, right? We know what that looks like, and it doesn't work. That's why the it's Israelis the pulled out. You think that's the only alternative? It's the only way to achieve security. Now, I'm not talking about settlements. You had settlements back when they occupied. And the occupation, the creation of security should be explicitly described as temporary and based on conditions. Then once you have security, you can bring in Palestinian security forces trained and equipped by the U.S. and the Jordan International Police Training Center. You can bring in Arab forces and they will come in in that case. But they're not going to come in and fight what will be seen as on behalf of Israel against fellow Arabs. And by the way, take casualties essentially for Israel. I don't I don't see any. Problem. Yeah. I've talked to Arab leaders about that. I just don't see it. I, I didn't mean like immediately. I didn't. I meant like with uh, with what you're talking about. Is there an is there any willingness of the Jordanians or the Arab League to if let's say the Israelis came out and said Netanyahu said we're going to occupy um, Gaza for another six months. And then after that, we need uh, Arab forces or Palestinian forces to come over and provide security for the region. And then we can talk about some sort of Palestinian state uh, one way or another. Is there a willingness by the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, by the Jordanians, et cetera, to engage in that kind of discussion at all? If the Israelis establish security, they are not occupying Gaza right now. They are clearing and leaving. They're conducting a raid and then departing. They're not 
securing Gaza. There is no real security in Gaza. What you have are a series of criminal entities, remnants of Hamas, remnants of Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And by the way, they are reconstituting. There's plenty of recruits for Hamas 2.0 in there, albeit not with all the materiel and the weaponry and ammunition that would be flowing normally through the Rafah crossing and under the southern border between Gaza and Egypt. But if they establish security, and you and I have discussed how to do that, a series of gated communities such as we created in Fallujah, Ramadi, Bakuba, you tell the Palestinian people explicit, we were going to make your lives better. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to get Hamas and Pidge and these others out of your areas. We're going to gate them. We're going to give you biometric ID cards. We're going to get you back into shelter initially of some type that is better than tents. As the homes are rebuilt, the basic uh, services are restored, reconstruction proceeds. And then you'll see Arab states sending not just uh, money, but also security forces to augment them. You'll see the opportunity for Palestin Palestinian security forces to come in uh, as well. And then even local governance can be. So the Israelis will continue to thin out as they go presumably from north to south, mm. again, creating these gated communities. And that, I think, Jake, is the only realistic option for actually how to provide a better life for the Palestinian people, which is the crucial element here that has been missing. Yeah. There's no vision yeah. for the day after. In, in, in Even the Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant, has called for a political vision for Gaza, and that has not been forthcoming. This would provide that and then you could have a situation, again, ideally, some years down the road where you actually see Palestinians and Israeli Jews living side by side uh, in peace. General David Petraeus, thank you as always. أصبح يحيى السنوار العدو الأول لإسرائيل لدوره القيادي في هجوم السابع من أكتوبر الذي راح ضحيته ما يقرب من 1200 إسرائيلي تبع ذلك قيام إسرائيل بقتل عشرات الآلاف من الفلسطينيين في حرب مدمرة شنتها على قطاع غزة وصفه الجيش الإسرائيلي بأنه رجل ميت يمشي ولد السنوار في مخيم للاجئين في غزة لوالدين نزحا من منزلهما فيما يعرف الآن بإسرائيل التي أنشئت عام 1948 أمضى السنوار 22 عاما في السجون الإسرائيلية قبل إطلاق سراحه في عام 2011 وكانت حريته لحظة محورية إذ تمت مقايضته إلى جانب أكثر من ألف سجين فلسطيني آخر مقابل الإفراج عن الجندي الإسرائيلي جلعات شريط الذي اختطف قبل خمس سنوات من ذلك التاريخ تولى السنوار مسؤوليات أمنية داخل حركة حماس وأدين بلعب دور في قتل إسرائيليين وأربعة مخبرين فلسطينيين مشتبه بهم وأعلنت حركة حماس تعيين يحيى السنوار رئيسا لمكتبها السياسي خلفا لإسماعيل هنية الذي قتل في ضربة إسرائيلية بطهران في الواحد والثلاثين من تموز يوليو عام 2024 وبقي مكان السنوار لغزا غامضا حتى أعلنت إسرائيل اغتياله في عملية عسكرية بغزة